was kind of the Tory gate guarding the shrine had been sapped yeah. of its power by Wait, sorcerous it. chains. God damn. Oh, that wasn't it either. Kutaro used Calibrus and the ninja's powers to fell his enemies and rekindle the shrine's power one step at a time. into a weaver, one of the Moonbear King's faithful servants, who seemed quite intent that Kutaro joined the club. The club. Fantastic. Kutaro, oh, did you shit. see that? Stick a bomb on that glowing taiko drum. Yeah, I know. I got that part. What a fight it was, as Kutaro oh, dodged God. scalding flames and swinging deaths and leapt from Tycho to Tycho. Oh. Yes. Almost there, Kataro. He may 
look tough, but I can see the fear in his eyes. Let's set those souls free! Oh my god! Children it held captive return to Earth. Ooh, the Tycho drum head. Awesome. Calabras! No! My scissors! I don't want to go back to me! <laughs> What is going on? But this had better be important, or else. They what? Rat is supposed to be guarding that forest. Talk to him. Yes, he would say that. The buffoon. The entire. I'm beginning to think the problem with my generals is that I have any! Hmm. hmm. But this week's a conspiracy. They steal Calibus. They escape my castle. Now they can hey, find the, the moon. Do you right, think right. someone else Damn is it. pulling the strings? Sorry, I didn't see that. Right. Keep a close eye on them. I shall take I matters into my own claws. <laughs> Never fear, you beautiful brute. You just need to find their ringleader. And then, what you do, you can tear them into tiny and threatening little bats! Ah! Ah! Put toxin production on hold. Kutaro has been spotted in the moonwood. Then the rat has failed in his task. Say the word, sire, and I will strike your enemies down. Very well. Crash the life out of Kutaro, no matter the cost, and you will be well rewarded. The reward is in the crushing. Watch as I devour all that stands in my path. We got a new, new evil villain, Mr. Snake Man. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound.
The Moonstone was Kuturo's only ticket home to Earth. Newly armed with the ninja's bombacious powers, bombacious. Kuturo continued to scour the Moonwood in search of the despicable rat. Five heads to this one, there's only nine. And goals. so the story continues. Ever since the goddess had vanished from her throne, the denizens of the Moonwood had hardly slept a wink. But then they received a visitor. Oh, yeah, looks like an evil a Mickey single, Mouse shit. smartly it? dressed rat. Gather round, the rat said, and produced a purple elixir. This tincture will cure all illnesses and stave off the tyrant's magic. And he offered to sell it to them for a reasonable price as a neighborly gesture. The Moonwood's inhabitants were overjoyed and relieved to have such a good friend looking out for them. Well, the Moonwood is a mess, all right. But where's General Rat? There's still no sign of him. At least it's nice here. Finally a place on the moon that's not crazy. Hey, Kataro. Even if you clobber that rat and get the Moonstone Shard, you better not give it to the witch. I mean it. Seriously, that witch? She's just using you so she can get her grubby hands on the Moonstone. Or worse. <laughs> oh, yes, dearie. Give me the Moonstone. And your brains. Who knows what she'll do with that kind of power? You should leave the Moonstone with me. I can keep it safe. What? You wouldn't dare. That dip squeak is even more shaky than I am. Can it, Chrome? No comments from the imaginary peanut gallery. Be honest, Kataro. Do you still not trust me? Because I think I could tell you something that might change your mind. Ready for this? My daddy is the sun. I know, it's like tragic. I'm a princess, I'm royalty. Then the moon bear king hits me with one lousy flash of magic. And suddenly, I'm just royally tiny. What? What's that look? I'm serious, I'm the sun princess. 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 What? Hey! Princess. And so, uh, with the vows of uh, friendship renewed, Kutaro and Picarina, princess of the sun, continued their quest to find the shattered moonstone. Karina was still hot on the rat's tail when they reached the edge of a dim and darksome lake. Oh, please, someone, anyone, help! Save me from my predicament! Mayday! Mayday! They heard the shrill cries of a damsel in distress. Lake Cedrus had been one of the Moon Realm's top tourist attractions. Until, of course, it got turned into a creepy, toxic, gut-turning pit of stink and rot. Where did we go? 
got here. Oh, it seemed like he needed a little help. Let him have it. Oh, shit. And yeah, we just sunk. Lake Cedrus had been one of the Moon Realm's top tourist attractions. Until, of course, it got turned into a creepy, toxic, gut-turning pit of stink and rot. Living in the lake were adorable little creatures known as the Kapagairu, but the rat's toxin had triggered a most unpleasant metamorphosis, and the few Kapagairu who dodged that bullet now faced extinction at the hands of their psychopathic relative. of yore, the moon goddess herself took holidays to the lake, but you wouldn't know it now, unless her idea of a day off was frightful fishes, freakish frogs, and phantasmal vistas. Gotta be searching, make sure that you don't miss anything. There's like some oh no parts of the background you can interact with. This very taiko drum boomed and bland as the Kapagairu fested their festivals. Now, the tune had changed. Wash shine! Wash shine! 
bonus stage. Fantastic. How many festivals do you know of that are held underwater? When it's a bountiful harvest you're praying for, nothing but... Just picture it, the pristine water, like glass, nestled in a vast kingdom of green. It was the perfect getaway for two young lovers. The grass by the lake, soft upon the buttocks. <clears throat> well, let's just say it was a very memorable honeymoon, even for a man full of memorable stories. But those vividly luscious days are lost, like frogs in a blender. When you get as old as me, and the days grow as weary and predictable as they do, you too will be longing for grass on your buttocks. You mark my words. Kutaro pressed on, unflinching, across the dangerous lake's mossy rocks and aquatic leaves, slashing at the petals on the wind as if composing a wordless poem. Kutaro pressed on, unflinching, across the dangerous lake's mossy rocks and aquatic leaves, slashing at the petals on the wind as if composing a wordless poem. Onward our hero sloshed, noting with every sploosh that the rat's purple poison had been splotched all over the place like putrid paint. Once. I was beautiful once. Could you shut up once? Thank you. 
lantern. It almost looks like one of those paper ones. At the heart of Lake Cedrus, Kutka. Curse that rat! Look at what I have become! I am a tragedy in the midst of unfolding. I hate to pick on the old trout, but aim for that brainless head of hers. Right in the water, right there. At the heart of Lake Cedrus, Kutaro came across a great blob of poison. Surely this was what had fouled up the lake. I am a tragedy in the midst of unfolding. I hate to pick on the old trout, but eat the frogs! I think they're helping us! children. Go on, Kataro. Blow her head off again. Off today. I can't 
can't work with this hair. Whoa, 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 with me. Oh my gosh, this is more clean. Come on, Kataro. Wait, wait, I'm not finished. The gods, the gods of the Moonwood, they are in danger. Drive us danger. Ma, you are doomed, doomed. The Moonwood's end is assured. <laughs> it's grievous, you ignoramus. Oh, that's it. Stop everything. Jeez, lady. Who flushed your muse down the toilet? <sighs> Curtain! Bill, get her out of here. I'll summarize for the audience. <clears throat> okay. So, basically... Me and Kitaro are the searching... The Cedars! Oh! You must find Mother and Father Cedar at the center of the forest before... Shut up! Me and Kitaro have to save the Moonwood's guardian deity. Whose roots stretch oh. beneath the whole forest. Yes. Oh, line. If Rhett convinces them to drink this nefarious... No. The Elixir! Wait, okay. We're done. Next scene. Yes, Kataro, they love you. Now walk! We are doomed. The forest shall rot. The birds shall chop their own obituaries. The cataclysm is upon us. What an honor it is to meet the one and only Mother and Father Cedar. <laughs> Aren't you polite and well spoken to? Make yourself at home. You're the talk of the forest, don't you know? They're all. Physics are interventions. <laughs> oh, listen to you. When you've got as much mileage as us, you start to develop certain, well, issues.
One of us is a little F-A-T. Ah, I see. But you do not seem so flumpy to me. <laughs> I'm not the one of us with the problem. Catch my drift? <laughs> Indeed I do. I shall make your wife slender and supple again. <clears throat> well, why are you... Catching his drift. Yes, madam. Do you? Do you smell that? Uh, why, uh, uh, yes, madam. What is that fragrance? It's not me. Guess who it is? Saying no more. I can make your husband's crack smell as fresh as the cool breeze. Oh. Here, allow me to gift you with this limited time free sample. But you must not tell my other customers. Somebody call 911. And now the moon wood is doomed. <laughs> His treachery lay bare. Rats sprayed mother and father cedar with a revolting violent groove. Silly shrapnels! Your forest is belonging to the Moon Bear King now! A few well-placed bombs should blow all that goop off. Have a free sample! <laughs> Ready to check out?
treachery laid bare, rats sprayed mother and father cedar with a revolting violent groom. Silly shrapnels! Your forest is belonging to the Moon Bear King now! A few wild yeah. bombs should blow all that goop off! Ready to check out? <laughs> My head if I did not corrupt the moonwood. I, I, I am meek and powerless and have no time left to obey. Oh, how sweet. The poor little rat. We never even considered him would be a victim to Rot moon bear king. No respect for middle management. But that's, that's just, just our, our opinion. opinion. You don't, you don't have, have, to have to punish, punish the, the creature, creature on our behalf. behalf. Oh, what kindness! What mercy! Oh, I am touching deeply, truly. If you let me sweep by, I will give you whatever you ask. You need only name it. Well, how about that? 
you know, the Lixima call it that's supposed to help with the missus's F.A.D. problem. Yes, the elixir. We've tried everything to cure my husband's pit odor. Nothing works. Just take a whiff. Then I've only got a surprise for you. Come on, wow! <laughs> Shopping camp. Whoa, what is going on? Mother and father see that. How would you like to be getting your hands on this plum miraculexia? Getting the stinky pigs in old age? Never to wait. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, perhaps. Too much chunk in your trunk? Never to fear. Oh. With just one gulp of plum miraculexia, you can kiss the problems goodbye. Ever wonder how the Moon Bear King got so strong? It's plum simple, dear. Curious why the Moon Goddess was so beautiful? It's a plum secret, dear. Guaranteed by the Mooney Mage Administration or your money back. Oh. Oh, but it must cost a fortune. It does. But today is your lucky day. For a limited time, we're offering a 90-day free trial. It will not cost you the dime. Not one dime? But you had better act now. This offer ends as soon as our program is over. Grab that phone today. Today. Would you cut it out? By the way, Kutaro, maybe you could do me a favor. Do you think those scissors of yours could lop a few pounds off the missus? I said enough! Death of a sales rat. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro. The souls he freed were homeward bound. Callous lies had brought the Moonwood to the brink of ruin, and while his defeat added another Moonstone shard to Kutaro's pile, a new adversary had already slithered within striking distance. The snake guy, of course. Okay, two heads, 17 souls. to Kutaro's tail. Mm -hmm. General Snake's body coursed with venom, and the Moonstone's power had rendered a mere whiff of it, the deadliest substance in the solar system. But the Moon Bear King found such reckless power repugnant. The unlucky snake was locked beneath the Black Castle and was to produce a toxic brood. How the serpent cursed his fate as he waited patiently for his chance to be free. Unfortunately for Kutaro, that horrible moment had arrived. Go, snake! Obliterate the whole moonwood if you must! Just destroy Kutaro! Slithering scourges the moonwood. Help us! Kutaro, you have to stop that snake! Do what I can do. Wait! Hold the horses! I am a bystanding innocent! Kutaro! <laughs> Come back! Look out! This way! No! Snake! I'm crying out loud! I am on your side! It's me! Yeah. 
Hey, it's Shadow of the Colossus, After his narrow right? escape from the jaws of General Snake, Kutaro tumbled to a stop at the tip of the serpent's tail. Come on, Kutaro. Let's go rap on this reptile's head. Inadequate environmental laws. Perhaps we all need to take a long, hard look at. Um, hello! We already know Snake Thompson is responsible. What story are you telling? Kutaro dashed along the length of Snake's undulating body, skipping over spines, blowing off a scale or three, plowing past poison, cutting through clouds, and wasting a few waves of sand.
the spitting image of Earth's own architectural wonder. What secrets lay within? The tomb of an ancient moon pharaoh? Perhaps a malicious mummy just waiting to wake from its slumber? Maybe it's like a supermarket. General Snake's toxin had already killed off a third of the Moonwood and would soon reach Mother and Father Cedar's haven at the heart of the forest. If the toxin reaches the Cedars, it's all over. We've got to whack the snake now before the whole it's Moonwood dies. What is that, Tree Man? Stupid snake's head came into sight. with Kutaro and Picarina and into the endless contorted bowels of the foul fiend. Well, we're alive, but look at all this toxin. One wrong step and ick. Help! I cannot swim! Please! I know my chicken is up! I... I repent! Please save me! You had this coming. Look at what you did to those poor folks in the Moonwood. I know. I'm full of the remorsels. Just tell me what you want. I will do anything. Good. Kataro, jump on his back. The rodents are ticket out of here. Ow! Oh, get, get off! You're, you're too... You're too heavy! Whatever snake had lunched upon earlier, it came floating along now in the form of broken bones and brains. Even these would soon be digested and absorbed. <laughs> I am melting! I am being digested! Get off! You're, you're 
too... too heavy! Oh, make it stop! Whatever Snake had lunched upon earlier, it came floating along now in the form of broken bones and grains. Even these would soon be digested. <laughs> I am melting! I am being digested! Silence! Oh. Please, I... Ow! I'm not liking the taste of my own medicine. It's in my eyes. Oh, what is this trickling up my nose? Put a sock in it! Kutaro rode General Rat down the serpent's slimy channels, grateful for the first and last time that his conveyance was full of hot air. Help! Oh, please! Help! Never fear! Kutarina is here! Thank you so much! I shall never forget you! To testins, scup to gullet. Kutaro had floated his way up Snake. They had just passed the creature's throat. Wouldn't be long now. been watching Kutaro's adventures through a magic mirror within the White Castle. That's a boy! I picked a winner all right. You see that, Yin Yang? We're one piece closer. But the Moonbear King had a mirror of his own and was, shall we say, enjoying the show considerably less. First tiger, then rat, now snake! How many generals does it take to lick this rat? Cases. <laughs> First I am made snackery of, then I am made dormant. Tiger, this rat. Is most unclean. I wonder if these generals are based on the uh, Chinese calendar. Moon Bear King. <laughs> Moon Bear King. I wonder if rat. this whole story Where is have Chinese of origin. You betrayed me. Be 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 betrayed you? Perish the thoughts. I merely had to trick Kutaro to gain the upper paw. And, and once I had him in my sights, pow, oh, right on the kisser. Really? Oh, thank that you. is very bold of you. Come closer Vinia. and tell me more. Yes, sir. I think you will be most impressed. Oh, Wait, sire. I... Cannot we put this all behind us? No. Well, you can't lie your way out of everything. Hi.
With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound! Alright, 144 freed souls. How many festivals do you know of that are held underwater? When it's a bountiful harvest you're praying for, nothing butters up your gods and ancestors better than lugging around heavy portable shrines. A particularly rowdy festival usually climaxed with Kapagairu romping about in the dark, forging romances and finding creative ways to increase the Kapagairu population. When the realm is at peace, it is completely white, a fool panda. Juno Rat's schemes have reduced it to a gibbous panda. If the uh, tyrant has its way, the poor creature is sure to go press it and then vanish altogether. <coughs> cherry tree. <clears throat> a cherry tree that changed history. When an honest boy destined to become king tried to chop it down, the tree's bark shattered with the boy's axe and all his confidence with it. The young man never recovered. His mighty dynasty was claimed instead by an apple tree killer who pinned the crime on someone else. Fine underwater drum by a master Kapagero craftsman. Since his dedication to the Moon Witch Shrine, it is sounded at the Lake Festival. The rock resistant body is made of lake wood. And the skin, well, the craftsman left no record. But Kapagero would get goosebumps at every stroke of the drum. One of the Moonwood's mini kaleidoscopically colored mushrooms. You wouldn't hear even the fussiest gastronome gripe about the flavor. Not when a single scrumptious bite sends the heart to spasm to joy, the lungs in a breathless wonderment in the soul to heaven itself. You don't know what you're missing. The baby Capogero. All Capogero raises their young by keeping them inside their mouths, so if you happen to see a mother devouring her squawks, don't get too bent out of shape. They made this way. The lucky ones who fall down the hatch get to be that much closer to their mother. For the tree shoot. Special stuff to find heads, apparently. 
beauty. Once upon a time, there lived a princess named Beaming Beauty, and she was most radiant. Her father, the Sun God and King of the Solar System, was loved and revered by his subjects. One day, however, the hard-working Sun was laid low by an undisclosed medical problem. Beaming Beauty was very concerned. Without you, she said, all will be plunged into darkness. I must light the world for you until you get better. And so she set off. Beaming Beauty first visited Mercury and Venus, her closest neighbors. In the name of my father, she trilled. Let there be light. Thank you, Princess, rasped Mercury. But you needn't spoil us when the other planets get so little light to begin with. Tears of gratitude streamed down Venus's reddened face. How thoughtful, said Beaming Beauty. A little of father has rubbed off on you. I shall journey on. The next day, she paid a visit to Mars. In the name of my father, she trilled. Let there be light. You are too kind, princess, groaned Mars. I feel brighter already. In fact, I think the outer planets deserve a dose of your affections. The emotion in his voice was palpable. Quite true, replied Beaming Beauty. The sun's light belongs to every planet. On the following day, she went to Jupiter and Saturn. In the name of my father, she trilled. Let there be light. No, please, cried Jupiter. Save your strength. We use gas heat, Saturn added emphatically. Any more toasty, and oh God, stay back, we'll explode. Uh, uh, explode with shame. For our frozen brothers grow colder every moment you lavish us with your warmth. How awful, said Beaming Beauty. The last thing I want is for them to suffer. Take care, my friends. Several days later, Beaming Beauty reached Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. In the name of my father, she trilled. Let there be light. Shucks, managed Uranus. You're melting my heart. Sunlight is a luxury we ain't used to miss, growled modest Neptune. You should go before... I'm not even a planet anymore, sobbed Pluto as he shrank away. <laughs> now, don't be silly, said Beaming Beauty. Being denied something your whole life doesn't make you unworthy of it. <laughs> we are unworthy, shouted all three planets at once. If, if we were, were any unworthy, we, we might, might just die. die. Really now, steamed Beaming Beauty. Are they that concerned about favoritism? What would it take for the planets to understand there was no shame in accepting a gift? And then she had an idea. Beaming Beauty gathered all the solar system together. I realize I've been unfair. So from now on, I shall visit all of you every day. Over my dead celestial body, said a small voice. Princess, added Mars, we fear you may be neglecting one of your other subjects, the one who needs you most of all. Who? gasped Beaming Beauty. Why, the moon, of course. Her goddess has been lost, her whole realm plunged in the <laughs> darkness. Only you can save her! The planet stared at Beaming Beauty until she got the picture. <laughs> How dreadful! I must depart at once. And so, all of the solar system, except the moon, lived happily ever after. The end.
Totoro emerged victorious from the belly of Snake, whose attempts to blight the Moonwood had ended in a nasty case of indigestion. Our hero was ready for more Moonstone Shards, and Act 3 seems as good a place to find them as any. Let us continue our adventure. With the snake's third piece of the Moonstone in hand, Kutaro schlepped himself onward to the shores of a vast ocean, the Moonshine Sea. It was a dreadful realm full of pirates and monsters, and frothing up its waters at the moment was a roiling rivalry between Captain Gaff Pirate Master of the Jolly Lamum, and Generals Pig and Sheep, who were vying for the Captain's riches in the name of their King. Yo ho! Another fine <laughs> haul, me old salt! Aye! The moonshine sea be ours now! We'll not be cowed by pirate nor monster! And what? <laughs> All thanks to the Moonbear King's sparkly prize, you all. Check it out, Katara. Those are Moonstone pieces. By the by, me happy hearty, have you seen the wanted posters? For that blaggard Totoro. Hey, <laughs> Bigachi. Look at the reward. If we catch this swab, we'll be swimming in swag. <laughs> Way anchor. Smartly now. A vast pig! There's not a cent to be had if we can't find him! Think of the time we might waste! And the electric bell. Arr, you be right again. We'll need one smashing scheme to catch him! <laughs> Keep it down! Arr, how dare you pour one without me, a scurvy bacon bit! First pig, first serve! Quick, Katara, now's our chance. <laughs> Slowly, stealthily, he stole his way closer. The two generals were three sheets to the wind, but Kutaro could not risk waking them. The moonstone shards were just a few inches from his fingers when... Oh, boy! It's a trap! <laughs> that scallywag Kutaro fell for it! Yo ho ho! The Moonbear King will heap riches on us now! Our hero had fallen, quite literally, for a ruthless ruse, and now he found himself wriggling around in the darkness. From the briny smell and lurching floor, he knew he must be trapped inside a ship. Release me, you horn swagglers! Did you hear that? I better use my light and have a look around. Not the larcenous barnacles I was expecting. Well, <laughs> hoist high those chins, for ye have just liberated Captain Gaff himself. <laughs> Kutaro spied a hook, that of the dread moon pirate, one of the goddess's four champions. What need of ye of that old relic? The lap dog whose arm it augmented was a disgrace of a pirate. A sorceress trick of the moon bear kid. Only Calibrus can cut through, lass. Scissor me timbers! The real Calibrus! <laughs> Well, look who's up to